Hey everyone, Kevin Muldoon here, and what I'm going to do in this video is review a WordPress plugin called Catchers. You can find this plugin at mycatchers.com. I will leave a link to it in the blog post and the comment area of YouTube so that you can check it out. Now you can see here, this is the home page, and you can kind of get an impression of what the plugin does here. You can see here it's got all the tickets, you've got new tickets answered, not answered, etc. And you get some of the features here. Um, now I'm sure many of you have used a help desk before, perhaps in your own websites or perhaps in a job that you worked for. There's a lot of benefits to using one, and you can see some of the benefits here. And you know, tickets are, um, can be escalated, they can be sorted, they can be exported. You can keep customers' history. There's an option to do private comments, etc. I'll talk about all these features in a bit. I was really just to kind of touch upon the main features just now. Now, you can see here, it integrates with all WordPress themes. And you would expect that, you know, this is a WordPress plugin. So it's going to integrate with all of the WordPress themes that are out there. So there's a lot of benefits to doing that. You can see the pricing that just now. Normally, it retails at $49 for a single site and $139 for the multi-license site. They've reduced the price just now. What I will say though is that the pricing is a little bizarre to me because the pro multi-site, I think that's an error, but at the moment it says that, you know, one single site for a year of updates and support is $29 or $49 normally. And the pro multi-site is $83 or $139 normally. But if you see down here, it says it's for two to five sites. And obviously the multi-license is more than double the price of the single license. So imagine this is supposed to say three to five sites. I'll double check with the with the, the developer, but I imagine that's um, supposed to be three to five sites because obviously if you get two websites, it'd be cheaper to just get two single licenses. Doesn't make any sense. It's worth noting that there's no difference between these uh, licenses as far as what you get. They're both offering the exact same features. This is a pro version of Catchers. However, there is a free version and if you go to wordpress.org and search for Catcher's Help Desk, you will see the free version that is available. I will primarily be looking at the pro version in this video. But the free version has got a lot of great features. It's got, um, you can see here, it's got fetch tickets, uh, tickets via email. This is a, a feature that many other WordPress Help Desk plugins charge for, so it's quite good to get that free. You've still got all the filtering, sorting, escalating, exporting, um, and there's a front end space for clients. Now, it doesn't matter how good a plugin is, how good the premium plugin is. If something is available for free on WordPress.org, you should always download that first. Download it, test it. There are some developers who don't, you know, understand how the freemium model works and things, but and they, they release a free version that's limited, too limited, and it doesn't actually advertise the premium version well. But Catcher's Help Desk is quite, it's quite a good advertisement for the pro version. I recommend installing that, looking at what it does, and it'll give you a better idea. The alternative to doing that, if you want to see the pro version, is to check out the demo. There's a demo available at demo.mycatchers.com, and we'll be taking a look at that. It shows you the demo of the contact form, and it shows you the demo as someone logging logging in as an admin, as an agent, or as a client. Now this is the admin area. This is what you will see if you've installed it on your website. But this is, because this, this is a public demo, so what I want to do is just quickly jump over to my test area, activate the plugin, and then show you what you get in the settings area. Just a few things that you don't get in this public demo. So, I'll go down and I will, in fact, I'll, what I'll do quick, just quickly, I'll just activate the free version. I just want to show you the difference. Um, there's not a lot of difference as far as setting goes. You can see when you install the plugin, you get this welcome page. Um, you can skip the setting. Now, this page here where it says create user pages, what you can do is create the contact form page and create a ticket list page. You can do that manually and insert the short code form into any page you want, but clicking on that will create the pages. Now, when you look at here, you know, everything kind of looks the same as you will get it in the pro version. By and large, there's a few, you know, features here or there that are different, but in the settings area, 
there's a lot of uh, settings that are not available in this free version. So, it is worth noting though, I mean, uh, again, the free version is pretty good. It does have a lot of great features and it really gives you an idea of what you're going to get in the, the pro version. So, um, I'll activate the premium version. Okay, so it's saying here to you can create your user pages and what it actually does when you do that, I've did this already because I've been playing around with this, you know, I need to do that obviously because I need to get an idea of how things work before I test the plugin and installs two pages. I actually did it twice, which is why I've got it doubled up here. Um, you've got ticket forum and you've got tickets list and ticket forum gives you just a basic form to insert into a page and I won't have any tickets here in the tickets list. But what you can do is, um, this is the public demo, and I was just messing about, about with it there. Now, there's tickets, and if I click preview, and there's no tickets there, but the alternative is here, I believe it's ticket forum. So you can insert this short code into any page, and there, there is the, um, the forum. That's all you have to do to insert the forum into your page. Obviously, in, in your own website, you'll be adding that to like a contact page, an advertising page, a support page, something like that. Um, okay, so that's what happens when you create the pages. So this is the settings area, right? But to give you a better understand and understanding of all this works, how it all puts the how it all goes together. What I'll do just now, I'm going to jump back once again. I'm, I'm jumping around a little bit, but it kind of does make sense. What I'm going to do is jump back. So this is the same as what's installed. This is a demo area on my website, and this is the demo area on the mycatchers.com website. The reason I'm on this public demo is because it's got all the data added in, and you know, it just isn't practical for me to spend a couple of hours adding all this demo data. So it makes more sense for me to come here. The one thing that was missing from this page is if you look at the tickets menu here, it goes down to save replies, you don't have the settings area and that's why I've installed it for you in my test data just to show you that. But I want to show you how it all works first. So this is the ticket area. Now to give you an understanding, understanding of what all this means and how it all works, when you add a, a help desk plugin to your website, what it can help you do is manage your tickets and your emails and all that a lot easier. So what would happen is you'd add this contact form to your website. Someone would come along and they'd submit an email to you. Now, instead of that email going directly to your inbox, to your email inbox, they'll create a ticket on your website and it'll store it on your database. Now, there's lots of benefits for doing that. Firstly, being able to manage everything through the WordPress admin area is a big help because it means that well, for a start, you can manage things in the same area where you're managing comments and posts and pages and all that. It also allows you to multiple staff to manage your tickets. So, you know, for for example, my blog, I could um, have other people come in and help me manage my load with emails. So it's going to greatly reduce the amount of work that I'm going to be spending doing emails because I can have other people doing that. If you've got a company, this is a godsend. You really need to use a help desk like this. And you can also see down here as well, you've got the statuses. You can really categorize and, and you really put the status of different tickets um, in different situations. It really helps you, you know, filter what you need to address and what you don't. So you can see down here, you've got my tickets. Now, my tickets is different from all tickets. My tickets is what's been assigned um, to me and which ones I'm addressing. So although I'm logged in as an admin, um, well, I'm logged in here as Mario Balotelli, um, the footballer. As lo as although I'm logged on as him, um, I can see all tickets from everyone else, and I can also see my tickets. Now, categories here, um, the only category they've got here is question, but I could add as many categories as I want. Now, that's really useful because I'll jump over to my website just now. Um, if you look at my contact form, I've just got a very basic contact form at the moment. And, you know, I've got reason for emailing if you want to review, if you want to hire me, if you want to, um, to send me a product for review on my YouTube channel, all that kind of thing. Now, 
go back here. Yeah. Now, if this was on, if I had this plugin installed on my own website, I could put a category for advertising requests. I could put a category for reviews, for guest post requests, for information requests, all that. And it, it helps me assign all the emails that are coming to me. The benefit of that is that I can help filter all the, all the emails that I think are important. I can filter all the emails that I still need to address and all the ones that, you know, I haven't dealt with yet. Um, and the ones, that, sorry, and the ones that I've um, dealt with in the past. It just helps you manage all your, your support a lot easier. And it's not something that I've got just now because I, I, I can kind of manage with the, e the volume of email that I've got. But sometimes, you know, if I'm going to bring someone in, I would have to really install a help desk plugin. And I really do like the idea of doing it all within the Word One website. You've got tags here as well. Tags work in the same way as categories. It just helps you categorize, you know, different replies, uh, different tickets. You know, you can assign them different tags so that when you're searching for something, you can find what you need. Under here, you've got saved replies. And this, for me, this is one of the biggest biggest selling points of the Catchers plugin. I think this is awesome. And, I, you know, whenever I test a plugin, in the one hand, I need to see how a plugin works for everyone because everyone uses WordPress in a different way. But also when I look at a plugin, I'm also thinking, well, how could I how could I use this plugin? How could I use this on my website? And this is the one kind of feature that really, really stuck out for me. This save replies thing, because I find that whenever I'm responding to my emails, you know, at least 50, maybe more, maybe 50% to 75% of all the emails I get, they're pretty much the exact same requests which means that I'm responding with the same things. Oh, please go to this page, there's more information, or yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. It's the same kind of reply, replies, you know. If it's an advertising request, most replies are the same. If it's a review request, I'm, I'm most likely going to direct them to my review page and then tell them that if they want more information to, you know, come, come to me with questions. The replies that I give them are the same. So this is where the, this, this um, is perhaps a little bit uh, not self-explanatory as much as it should be. Save replies is basically just templates, email templates that you can insert into your replies. It's going to greatly reduce the time that you're going to spend replying to people. You can see down here some examples that they've got. Hi folks, we are glad to hear from you. Thanks for the time. Um, request additional info. You can see here they're using fields. So you can insert automatically the person's name, the ticket history. Um, you can insert your own name. Um, and that will can change depending on who is the person, you know, the author or the person handling the ticket. And you've got it down here as well from your ticket ID, your ticket subject. All these fields can be can be um, inserted into your reply and you can change them at any time. You can see here as well, these are the fields. So look, please enjoy. And then I can insert, they're calling it a macro. So let me see, what could I put in? Tablet, ticket public URL. Ticket date. There's all this. All this information is really useful when you're replying to people because it, it helps you. you. Can say, well, please check out your ticket ID. Is this blah 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 blah, and you can formulate standard replies to common questions. And if you are in a company, or even if you're not a company, the fact is, when you're getting emails on a regular basis, the majority of the questions you get through your website are very similar. Hi there, I'd like to advertise on your website. Hi there, could I submit a blog post? That kind of thing. So. This save replies feature is a big win-win in my eyes and I think um, it's one of the biggest selling points for me. When I'm looking at this, I'm thinking this is something that I could really use in my own setup. I think it could save me a lot of time and I'm sure it would save a lot of other people time as well. Now, we're now in the tickets page, back to the main tickets page and you can see at the top that, you know, it works in the same way as any other WordPress plugin. It's using the, the custom post type and you can see at the top, we've got custom, we've got uh, all tickets, sorry. We've got trash, so they've been uh, deleted. We've got answered tickets, we've got not answered tickets, and then we've got the tickets that are, it just says my, but it basically means the ones that have been assigned to me, my tickets. And then you've got the ID, the status, the person, the contact is the person who's contacted, the conversation title, and the last update. So that helps you see when was the last reply. Now, if we just jump into one of these tickets, you can start to see how this all works. Here we go. Now, you've got the title. You've got the last reply was by this person, Ronald Kumanhold. 
and that's his email. At the right hand side and down here as well, you see here, um, you've got status, answered, not answered, new, closed, and assigned. So what you can do is once you've replied to something, you can re reply, um, change the status to answered, not answered. You can change the status to new or closed. And you can also change who the, um, the ticket is assigned to. So that can be changed there, but it can also be changed down here, uh, up there, sorry. At this point, you can change this whilst you send a reply. So this will change it once you click reply. At the top, you can change it at any time. So you can change the status, change the category, change who it is assigned to. Now, changing who a ticket is assigned to is quite useful. For example, if I'm going on holiday for a week, which I was last week, I was away for a week, I could assign any of the tickets that I had. For example, I could assign all the tickets that I had to Ronald so that Ronald would have to deal with it. Um, I can also, you know, once I've completed tickets, I could then change the status and say that they are now closed because they've been resolved. Down the bottom, you start seeing how useful this is because you can see how each question is followed by an answer and you can quote as well. You can make quotes and quote previous replies. It helps you see the different replies, the different colors is used at the side here as well. Is, is, is quite a useful way of seeing the conversation, of seeing the discussion, and it's very useful as well, again, to be able to do this through your website. You can, of course, check via email as well. You can do fetch by email. You can get tags down here, and you can include attachments as well. You can at attach anything you want there. Now, we talked about the save replies. Um, you've got, you know, see I'm replying there. Hi there. I could then put simple answer and then there you go that's how it could be that's how quick it could be replying to someone because I'm using the standard replies the save replies and up the top here you also see a private note now there's a private notes down here as well you can see all the data of the replies are categorized as well as history agent replies contact replies and you've got the private notes private notes is really useful for example I'm trying to think, like say for example, I sold a plugin myself and a customer was unhappy. He's opened a ticket, said like, I'm, I'm not happy with the plugin, blah, blah, blah. I could then jump in to the discussion at one point and I could say to Ronald, this person here, and I could say, listen, I agree. The customer's been put in a bad situation here. Offer them a full refund. And then he could see that and then he could handle it. So it's a good way for staff to talk to each other essentially and talk about the, the, the problem at hand and it just helps. The whole situation is, is a lot easier because you can manage things. You can have a private discussion without having to jump out of there and send emails to each other about it. You keep everything inside the ticket. And I think that's a really big plus. And the other thing here is it's got, you can copy and blind copy and people here as well. That's all there really is to it as far as handling tickets. It, it really is a very good system. It's very straightforward. I love how it's all within the WordPress admin area. Now, you can see here all the different statuses. This is kind of how it would look once you've got lots of tickets on your website. So, what we can do now is um, jump over to the settings area. I hope this can, gives you an idea of how the plugin works though. You know, you should, you should again, you should install this plugin yourself to get a better I idea, but... What, how I would be doing this, I would be checking things have been answered and then I'd be closing the tickets that going that those have been resolved and then I'd be, you know, looking at when tickets that haven't been answered for months and saying, right, okay, should these be closed? Things like that. It helps you, you can, because of all the filtering options, because of all the, the different statuses and categories, you can really find things a lot easier. You know, with Gmail, I use Gmail a lot for my emails and a lot of the time I find myself searching for things. There was actually a problem the other month where I found that someone had actually paid for a review on my website and they'd paid, but they'd paid at the exact same time when I received four or five other payments and they actually got lost in the midst of it. And I couldn't believe it. I was so surprised because I was, I was really embarrassed by it. But that's the kind of thing that wouldn't have happened with a ticket system. But with Gmail, you know, things like that can get sl slipped through the net a little bit more. I'll just quickly jump through back to the settings area now. 
Now, this is the settings area you'll get with this plugin, and you should hopefully have a better understanding of what all these settings mean now. Now, you've got here the general page, you've got the default assignee. So, when every ticket comes in, I can assign it to my test user or I can assign it to myself. You've got um, whether you want uh, file attachments, open tracking, enable auto reply, you can change the footer and you can add in different things in the footer. That's the create plugin pages um, option that we saw er earlier with, um, with the initial page. Then when you activated the plugin, that option to create the plugin pages was there and you can do it again there. That will just create the ticket form and the ticket um, list, the listing page. But again, I would just use the short code. The only thing I would say that about the contact form and the short code is I would really like it to be detailed somewhere. There's a contact form option here. It just asks whether you want the ticket category noted. But I would like to, there to be, I think there needs to be more information in the plugin itself to explain how that works. Because when I first turned it on, I don't think it was really self-explanatory. Now, on this subject, um, no, I was going to jump, in fact, well, I'll jump across. I'm going a little bit on a tangent here, but on the subject of support, when you pay for Catcher's plugin, they've just got an email form here, but there's a, a help page thing that they give you when you purchase a plugin. It's like, you really should follow this tutorial first um, if you're struggling with anything. It gives you a better idea of how it all works. Uh, okay, so back to the settings area. Apologies for getting off the tangent. I'm, I'm, sometimes it's better for me to go off on a tangent so that I don't forget it, you know. So um, we've got the incoming mail and you've got the settings here that you can check for mail every minute, 5, 15, 30, every hour or never. You've got your new username, password. You've got pop. You can use Gmail, different things. For outgoing mail, you can set up SMTP settings which is really good. It means that you could use an external server to handle all your emails. That's good from a security point of view as well. Notifications, you can get notified from every new reply from a client when a ticket is assigned to an agent and add a ticket link to notification letter. You've got the contact form. I've got help catcher and there's widget code there. If you want to add, a, I think that adds a form, doesn't it? To That's something I've not tested yet. Add to a page for widget activa activation. Right, okay. Um, and we've got the get help area as well at the end. That's, that just, that's the same as um, the website. just gives you a ticket form. What I will say is the one area I think, there's a few, well, there's a few areas I think that, the, um, that I think needs to be improved. The first one is with this contact form. Now, I'll show you just now. If we jump across to here, this is the contact form that's on the demo area. Now, as it stands, this I mean, this is one of the things that I brought up with the developers, but as it stands just now, there is no way of changing this form. And uh, that is, for me at the moment, this is the biggest limitation of the Catcher's plugin. It just comes up the name, email, subject, description, and you can put a, a, an attachment box, an attachment field there. You can't change it now. You know, I, like even on my, like I go back to my website, I'm, I used to use, um, what do you call it, Gravity Forms, all, all, the, all these other premium plugins for forms, but I found that I wasn't using all the advanced features. I've just got a simple f um, plugin now, but even just now, that you see like this, reason for emailing, this is something, you know, little things like that are really essential when you've got a website and you're trying to filter the information coming to you, you know, whether it's for advertising, reviews, you know, customer complaints, that kind of thing. At the moment, you don't have that. You just have a generic form with my catchers. I spoke to the developers about this and they said that they're going to improve this area. They're going to add functionali functionality to create your own custom forms and they're going to look at how they can integrate catchers with popular you know, WordPress contact forms. That is something I think they really, really need to do. Another area that I found um, a little bit lacking in a way was, well, perhaps not lacking, but what I'd like to see um, is custom statuses. Now, this has got answered, not asked, not answered, new and closed. When you've got your own setup, everyone's got a different setup, and when you've got your own setup, you really want to change, you know, how you you work everything. Now, you know, for me, if I, I was looking at this, and that was one of the first things I noticed, and I thought, right, okay, this is somewhere 
where I'd like to change it. At the moment, they don't allow custom statuses. Again, this is something that I brought up with the, with the developer, and they say that that's something they might look in the future because a few people have requested it. To give you an example of how this worked, you know, um, on my website, I've got, uh, like, to advertise, would you like a review, that kind of thing. If, for example, someone wanted a review on my website, I could put review, I could change statuses to a review applied, review uh, in process, and then perhaps review completed, things like that. Or I could also do, you know, like guest post submitted, guest post um, requested, or guest post required more information. I, I'd, I'd find it a little bit limiting using just those basic statuses, I think. When you've got your own custom, your own company, your own setup, you really want to create custom statuses because it's really going to help you filter the information. There are, you know, I think there's some workaround with that. If you use tags or if you use categories, you could probably do this and assign different things to different categories. But I think the status system is what it should, you know, that should be a little bit expanded a little bit so that you could do that. It's not a major thing, but I do think it's something they need to work on. That's a minor thing. The contact form is definitely the bigger issue just now. They really need to improve the functionality of the contact form. But if you go to demo.mycatchers.com, you can log on as the client. Now, before just be, just to be clear, this is just a basic word, minimal WordPress theme. The design of the page for your help desk, for your client area, for your ad, you know, all this. It all will depend on what theme you're using on your website. So if you've got a fancy WordPress theme, a professional WordPress theme, you know, everything's going to look nicer. It really depends how you've got your website set up. You know, if it was on my website, it would, you know, the forums and all that would be here using my design. But it's just using a a, a, a minimal theme, a minimal design. And I, I can see why, you know, it's a demo. You don't want anything too complicated. So just bear that in mind, though. This isn't how you would see the the client area. This is just an example of how it would integrate with your website. I'm sure you'll realize that anyway, but it's worth clarifying. Well, oh, get a drink of water. My mouth is right. So this is the ticket list page, and this is one of the pages that's created. And you can see here I've got answered how customers log their queries, and this is how a customer or a client or someone who's emailed you. This is what they would see. And you can see this is what they would be seeing. So when you're seeing things in the admin end with all this kind of thing, they're seeing things like this. And they can reply using a forum, an attachment, all that. The other thing is you've got the login as the help desk agent. Now, an agent obviously can't change many important settings. You know, that they can't be changing help desk settings. What they can do is respond to things. And uh, this is how... In fact, I've, I, that's what I was showing you before, actually. So when I showed you the admin area on my website, it was actually the, the help desk agent that I was showing you before. So that's what they would see. It also had login as help desk admin, but I don't think... Ah, there it's there. Well, I was, I, I was unaware of that. <laughs> I set this up on my private website because I didn't think that the, there was an admin area available, but it clearly is. So that's me being an absolute idiot. Um, but I, I would have done that anyway because I always like to install plugins on my test server to test that everything is okay. Um, so I'll just quickly run through this. I didn't I didn't realize this was available. I, I think I must have logged in. Know what it is? I think see when you click on the admin panel. Ah, uh, that's what it is. I've came to this this demo area. I've clicked on admin panel, thinking that that's to the admin area, but it, it's taken me to the admin area, but not as an admin. It's taken me as a help desk agent. So again, a help desk agent is just a member of staff who has been able to reply to tickets, etc. but they can't change anything important like settings. And you can see how they've got, you know, they've got the settings all, well, I've not got set, um, permission for that. Ah, right, okay. So I would have, I would have had to install that anyway. Um, so yeah, you can see it. You can kind of see how the whole thing works. I'll just kind of, I'll go back to the, the website just now. As, um, and you can see, you'll maybe get a better understanding of the features that I touched upon at the start. The ticket list filtering, sorting, escalation, all that kind of thing. That, that basically just talks about how you can escalate tickets. You can change the status from not answered to answered and all that kind of thing. 
you can keep the history of, of clients, you can, you know, there's a little contact area, private comments, fetch tickets via email, so you can reach them via the contact form and then respond to emails and they will get the email reply immediately. Now the pricing, I touched upon that earlier and again, if you're going to download it, first start with the free version, go to wordpress.org and search for catchers help desk, install that first, always, always install the free version if there's one available, it, it really is a smart thing to do. Now, you can see here, the normal prices, they've got a discount, I was looking at this earlier today and this discount wasn't here, so this has actually caught me a, a little bit unawares, um, this wasn't here when I, I, I checked this uh, plugin last night and I was, and was looking at it today and this, all these prices weren't here, so the discount is only for the next, um, I'm recording this on the 25th, Tuesday 25th of October, and so it'll be for another six days. Um, you can see the different features here. The free fetch tickets for your email is available in the free version, but you've got all these additional features in the pro version. You've got save replies, which is the standard standard uh, email replies, standard reply templates, essentially. Conversation feed filtering, forwarding, copy and blind copy fields, private notes, ticket history, MailChimp integration is coming soon, apparently, and embed tool help catcher. That's something I never really looked at, the help catcher thing. Um, um, right, okay, I think this is just a... I think the help catcher is just a little pop-up message you get. Um, the little pop-up forum. I believe so. Yeah, I believe it's that. So that is the help catcher, so it's just for somebody to submit a quick email to you and then you can respond. Now, the... As far as pricing goes, as you can see, at the moment it's $29, it's normally $49, so depending on when you check this, the price could be $49 or it could be $29. If you're looking at it just now and you're interested, obviously try and take advantage of the 40% discount when you can. I, no I noted this earlier about the two to five sites, that's something they're going to have to check. I think that should be three to five sites because there's no discount if you're getting two. But there's no difference between the single site and the multi-site license as far as what you get. Both of them are the exact same features. Uh, features. You get a lot of WordPress plugins and what they do is they stagnate the, the features across the board, you know, so Lite gets this and then the premium gets this one and the developer license gets more features. They've not done that. I, prefer, I actually prefer this way, you know, if you've got a pro license, a single site or a multi-site, you're getting the exact same product. The only difference is the number of websites, domains that you can get support for and updates to. $29 is a really, really cheap for this kind of plugin. There's a lot of other plugins out there and some of them are actually cheaper. Uh, I've came across one or two that are cheaper, but what they do is they've got a lot of extensions. So you need to actually add on extensions to get the same functionality as my catchers. So as far as the total cost, this seems like a really good option. At the moment, I do think the, the one that they need to really sort out is a contact form. I think for me, that is the biggest kind of thing holding the plugin back. It's it's not going to change. It's still a great plugin, but I do think, you know, every single person who's using this, everyone needs to have a custom contact form. We need to designate our own fields, our own custom fields. We need to build our own contact form because we all run our businesses in different ways. And I mean, I've essentially just got a simple blog and I've got a more complex contact form than this. You know, can you imagine what it'd be like if you are selling products, if you've got an e-commerce store or, you know, anything like that, you really want to change the form and make it more advanced to have different options for, you know, different types of customers, for complaints, for customers, potential customers, for existing customers, for deliveries, that kind of thing. You need to build this form better so that if, when the developers listen to this, I'm sure they'll take, take this on board, but they really need to focus more on developing that contact form functionality because, it can be the difference between something that's been a good plugin and a, a great plugin, a fantastic plugin. I do think though, if you've got, you know, we all kind of reply to emails on a daily basis when you work online, but I do think that a help desk plugin, once you reach a certain point, you know, you're receiving a lot of emails, filtering those emails becomes very important. And it also becomes important to hire other people so that, you know, you can manage your email more effectively. At the end of the day, as your business grows, you don't want to be sitting as the only guy that responds to email. That's just crazy. You you want to be hiring staff. You want those staff to be 
able to reply to people and then you know change the status and it the fact is every big company in the world uses a help desk and that's you know they're not using one single email address and i think if you've got a wordpress website this is a very good option to look at so i do recommend checking it out it's called catchers again check out the free version catchers help desk at wordpress.org but check out the the pro version as well at catchers.com sorry mycatchers.com and I'm going to put a link to the free version, the premium version, and the demo area underneath these comments in the YouTube um, video. So please do check them out. If you've got any questions about this plugin, please do let me know. I've been using it for about a day or so, and, and you know I've not used it on a live website yet. I've just been playing around with it to get a better idea of how it works. But my first impressions are that it, it, it's really good. I, I really like the way that it works. Um, I think that it's really well designed. I think... You know, it's clearly there's some features that could be added to it to make it better, but I think it's a really good plugin. I think they've got a really good base here and they've got something to work on. And I'm, I'm curious to see how this is going to be in six months or a year because I think it doesn't really need too many tweaks to make it a really, really fantastic plugin. And in fact, at the moment, it's a really good plugin. I just think a few extra features would make it that little bit better. So thanks for watching, guys. If you've got any questions, please do ask a comment below. I'll do my best to answer them. And if you've enjoyed the video, please do consider subscribing to the Rise Forums channel and liking the video, subscribing to the channel, sharing the video. It all helps me. And yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. So please do leave a comment. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time. Take care.